Welcome to everybody. We are going to start this session of webinar and I hope that you are all, all listening to me wherever you are. So the subject of our webinar is my civil one-stop solution in analysis and design of any type of bridge. So we are going to to analyze the bridge structure using my dust civil. So I hope that you will understand very well. And about our our agenda, the content. The first point is about my dust IT. The second point is about the user of our software. The third point is the introduction to my dust civil software and the fourth point is about the demonstration on Calvert Bridge using my dust civil. So we are going to analyze and design the Calvert Bridge in three dimensional. So before we continue, I have to present myself. I'm Dr. Dan working here in my dust IT in South Korea. So I'm the one who was sending messages, emails to every one of you, so you can attend this webinar. Okay, so I'm going to introduce very quickly the company and I hope that you will understand very well what we do and what solution we provide to engineers all over the world. So, uh, my dust company was established in 1989 here in Korea and it has eight branches all over the world and the number of licenses we distributed it's uh, more than 95,000 licenses so the big offices we have in the USA, Poland, Russia, China, Korea and India so now I'm in Korea Seoul and it's the place where I'm doing this uh, webinar. So we can see that a lot of engineers trust my dust civil product. And you can see that we have customers about 10,000 in uh, 110 countries. And the number of the, the project that have been using my dust civil, it's about 250,000. So in Africa, we have also different users. In Kenya, we have the pri private users and government users, as you can see on this slide. So the next users are in uh, Tanzania. We have also private companies and government users. And in Uganda also we have different users and this is the list of the the partial list of the top global clients so i can't show you all the users we have because there are too many so i'm just showing you the partial list of the users so about the the program we develop here in midas information and technology we bring solution in different field as you can see that we have solution in bridge engineering in geotechnical engineering, in mechanical engineering, and in building engineering. So the most famous software we use in bridge engineering is MIDAS so Civil that we are going to use today with you. And the, the solution we bring in geotechnical engineering, we use the software GTS NX and SoilWorks. So GTS NX, it's about 2D and 3D modeling in for geotechnical problems and soil works is for 2d design so in the mechanical engineering the software we use is midas nfx and midas fx plus and in the building the software we use to make the analysis and design of building is midas gen is the is the one that we are using for building 
and my dust engine plus and then the last one is my dust design plus with the detail design of building so my dust it also organizes some online training and face to face training also when the company requires some training our technical team can go to the company and perform some training for the engineers in the company so when you have some requests please don't hesitate to send me the message on phone or by email so i can reply to you about the training and i hope that those who are applying now few of them they already sent some requests to me and other also can send some requests for training so in the coming months we can discuss about the schedule so we can go and train the engineers in different company in Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda, Uganda, and India, Congo. So the first point we are going to discuss, it's about the, the application field of Midas Civil. So Midas Civil can analyze and design the following type of bridges. The conventional bridges, as you can see, we have arch bridge, truss bridge, steel girder bridge, integral bridge, culvert bridge, and beam bridge. So these conventional bridges are easily modeled and anal analyzed in the software. The other type of bridge, so when we are designing the bridge, we always think about the method of construction we use in the bridge. So for the balance cantilever method, this method is supported fully in our software. So don't worry about the construction method to use to construct the bridge. All those methods are supported in my dust even. The incremental launching method, the movable scaffolding method, the prescat segmental method, and the full staging method of bridge construction, all of them are supported in my dust civil. The other one is a cable state and suspension bridge that are supported in, uh, in my dust civil. Also, we have cable state bridge, I'm sorry for the screen, and extra, extra draws bridge and uh, a suspension bridge. So my dust civil doesn't analyze only bridges, it can also analyze other structures. As you can see on the screen, we have the plant structures, water tank, retaining wall, and then we have also the aqueduct and warehouse. The other project we have done in Africa, especially in Kenya, they are shown on the screen. And the other project we have done in Uganda, you can see the company and the project we have done using Midas Civil and other project we did in Uganda also, they are on the screen also. So this project also was done in Tanzania, in Israel, etc. So Midas Civil can analyze and design also building structures, stadium, also, we can have also these structures, as you can see, Incheon Bridge, Sultong Bridge, Beijing National Stadium, Khalifa Building. This type of structure, they can be easily analyzed and designed using Midas Civil. So in Midas Civil, also, we have different bridge, depending on the material. We have the reinforced concrete bridge. and especially for pre-stress concrete bridge we have all kind of pre-stressing method in my dust civil we have we have the pre-tensioning tendon we can model the post-tensioning tendon we can also do the external post-tensioning tendon as you can see on the screen and the other type of bridge we have the pre-stressed composite bridge is also supported in my dust civil the next point is about the geometric modeling. So in my dust civil, we have three different methods we use to model the structures. 
So the first method is conventional method. The second one is importation of method geometry from one software to another. The example from AutoCAD to MyDAS Civil, we can import some model. The third method is weighted method. So this method is really powerful in uh, modeling the bridges. For the conventional method, we can use only the, the geometrical tools we have in MyDAS Civil, and you can make your own geometric modeling using this tool by going to node and element. So you can use node and element tools to make the model. And the different elements we use in MyDAS Civil are listed here on this slide. As you can see, we have beam element, truss element, tension only, hook cable element, compression only cave and plate, plane stress, plane strain, axisymmetric, and solid element. So most of these elements are used in the, the modeling. Usually we use beam element, plate element, and solid element in the modeling of bridge. And sometimes we can use also truss for uh, example in the, the, the hangers when you are modeling arches, arch bridge. So for the importation, my dust can import different files from from other software. So my Civil is compatible with other software also. It's compatible with SAP 2000 and Nastran file can be imported easily and Lusas data file can import can be imported in my Civil and you can model using that file also. Also we have the exportation feature here in, in my Civil. So my dust files can be exported into this other format of, of files in my Dust Civil family software and in AutoCAD, DXF file, and etc. So this is an example of the importation of AutoCAD file to my Dust Civil. You can see that the whole model can be Im imported in my Dust Civil without any problem. So the other the other feature in my Dust Civil we have the rebar input in section. So you can design any type of section using my Dust Civil. So, and you can rearrange also the reinforcement in the section. So when you are modeling, you need also to specify the material you are going to use and the, the material you are going to assign to different elements you used in your, your model. So in my Civil, we have different material we use, especially concrete, steel, and then the composite material of steel reinforced concrete. And the user has the option to define his own material using the user defined feature in the software. So as you know that the concrete has different properties and we need to deal with those pro properties in the modeling. So you can use the, the creep function and shrinkage function and you can link this property of concrete with the the concrete you created before when you are you are you are adding material to your model also we can specify some compressive strength function based on different code we have here in the the software the software is full of design code so you can choose any design code uh, and each design code can have its specific curve for creep and shrinkage and compressive strength curve. So you can use those data depending on your needs. So the other point is the section 
the reinforced con for reinforced concrete section and for pre-stressed concrete section. So here you can see that for the girders, we have every kind of section here we usually use in practice. So you can select from this database the section you want to use to design your girders for the bridge. And while selected any any girder here, the section designer in the in the software can calculate automatically the section properties as you can see in this figure here. So this is the steel composite section for beam element in my dust civil. So we have also composite section, a database well arranged it is here in the software. You can use it easily for your modeling. So the tendon property here, pre-stressed tendon, comp uh, tendon properties, can discuss about them a little bit. You can use the relaxation coefficient is provided based on different code. So you can choose any code and then you can, you can have the, the curve for relaxation coefficient. The ultimate strength of the tendon, yield strength, curvature friction, the wobble friction factor. And we have also two type of, of tendon. You can use the banded and the unbanded type. So we have also different shape you can use while you are modeling your, your tendon, your pre-stressed girders. So in my dust field, provide a lot of type of shape of tendon. And you, are, you have also the other option. You can input your shape using the Excel sheet. You can input it in my dust civil easily to have the shape you want to design uh, to model the tendon. So these are the the third uh, method we used to model it's uh, the the wizard, and this feature is really powerful compared to other software of bridge analysis and design. So my dust civil provide the wizard method in order to easily model the the bridge. And in this section, we are going to use the, the Calvert Pax widget in order to analyze the bridge we are going to, to learn today. So make sure that you understand very well this part because it's a saving. It can save your time when you are doing the model. So for the segment of bridge model widget, we have these four. For widget, and I explained it. I explained this one previously in the type of bridges we have, different construction method, and for the create method widget also, and the rail track analysis widget. So for the rail track analysis widget, you can think about the the rain the 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 railway when it's connected to the bridge. So that interaction of uh, railway and bridge can be easily analyzed using this rail track analysis with. So this feature is really powerful in my dust field also. For the GRIH model, we said, you know that when you are modeling the girders of the bridge, uh, the bridge uh, have to sustain the, have to withstand the lateral Forces, so this GRIH model help easily to design those kind of bridges. So for other type of bridges, we also we are, we have also the wheeled for suspension bridge, cable state bridge, and so on. As you can see on the screen. So because we don't have a lot of time today, so I'm going to to explain a little bit quickly, so we can start the analysis and design of the Calvert widget bridge. So this is uh, the dialog box for the, the reinforced concrete frame and box Calvert widget. So this is what we are going to use 
when we are going to design the culvert, we are going to learn today. So in the culvert, this part I'm going to explain in detail when we are going to, to do the practice of culvert bridge in Midas. So for the pre-stressed composite bridge, we said we have this one. So in which, uh, in every widget, you have to follow this, this tab here. In this widget, we have the layout section, tendon, load, and construction stage. So you, you need to click to every tab here and input the corresponding data asked by the software. So after you complete, com you, you complete this uh, input, then you click OK. Then you can have the model generated automatically without struggling. So this is the GRIDGE model widget. This is for the <clears throat> bridge construction uh, by free cantilever method. So here, usually, we usually use the word balanced cantilever method internationally. But in Korea, they usually use free cantilever method. So don't be confused by the, the word. The other wizard is about the full staging method. And the other wizard is about the, the movable scaffolding system. So the incremental launching method also is supported in the wizard. Steel composite bridge wizard also is supported. And we have also for the cable state and suspension bridge widget. So when you are constructing the cable state and suspension bridge widget, you can, you have the software can, is capable to consider the initial, ten, the initial tension we usually do to, when, when we do the, the construction of this kind of bridge. So that force is really supported in in the construction stage analysis when you are you are but you are designing this cable state or the suspension bridge widget and this one is for rail track analysis mode model so when i was explaining about the the interaction of the railway and the, the bridge the the bridge so this interaction is analyzed very well using this rail track analysis model widget in in my civil so you can see that when the when you, you have this uh, relation between the displacement and the lateral resistance force of the track so when the track is 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 unloading and when the track is uh, is on the loading condition we need to mix these two cases in order to make the design of rail track widget. So in my civil also the soil structure interaction is supported. So the boundary condition that you can use in the soil structure interaction, they are provided here. You have the spring support for the soil. So if you have the property of your soil, can input the data here and have the, the behavior of, of this soil uh, structure interaction. So in the coming webinar, we are going to take every section here in, uh, in the software because we cannot understand every, every feature in the software in one hour. So in the coming months, we are going to make the schedule to go in detail using each point I'm talking about right now. So don't, don't get nervous. And we are going to, to go step by step, analyzing every type of bridge we have in my dad's civil. So you can use it very well in your project. So the boundary condition we have here in my dad's civil, we have support, elastic link, rigid link, general link. Uh, we have also the resist, uh, release features, point spring, surface spring, and abutment spring, pile spring, you can use to make the boundary condition of the foundation. So the load type in Midas Civil, we have different load type. 
all the load that, that we can use to design the bridge are presented in the software. So for, for your information, all of the people who are participating in this webinar, they, they can have the discount of, of 50 from, from 30 to 50 percent of the software if you if you finish the session. So don't don't move out. You have to be connected until the end so you can you can benefit to that promotional price of the software. So make sure that you're following very well and from the beginning until the end. So the next point here it's about the self weight temperature load is defined in euro code so the self weight can be also defining in the static load but it's not shown on the screen i'm sorry on in the static load you can find the self weight and in other other load load type so in this case you can see that the temperature the temperature load can be defined easily uh, using the menu load and then if you click to temp and pre-stress you can find this dialog box here for the temperature and the section can be designed based on different code implemented in the software so based on each code you can find how the temperature can can act on the section of the girder For about the moving load also, we have different cases here for moving load. When you select moving load, you have to select also the code you are going to use for the moving load. So in the moving load, we have four different points you need to know in order to define the, the vehicle load applied on a different lane when you are designing the bridge. So the traffic line lane, it's for usually for beam elements, line element. The surface lane here we have for plate element. And after you, de you, de you define the line lane and surface lane, then you can go to vehicle. You can define the, the standard vehicle or you can add a user defined vehicle here. So for the user defined vehicle, you can make the, you can input the data for your vehicle, the load of your wheels, and the software will, will convert that and will apply it on the lane you have defined previously. So after defining the vehicle, then you can define how those vehicles will be combined on the, the lane. And that is how someone can apply the moving loader in MITA 7. The next point is uh, about the dynamic loads. So also for, uh, dynamic loads are here in uh, in terms of response spectrum function and time history function. Here they are implemented in the software. For response spectrum function, when you click this button, you have this dialog box that appear, and then you have to click add and choose the design spectrum you are going to use in the, the analysis. So after selecting the, the design spectrum from the code implemented in Mada Civil, then this graph is, is shown automatically and you can check it. And the damping file can be also inputted easily in Mada Civil, as you can see here on the screen. And for the forcing function, Using the time history function, you can input the forcing function for applied on the on the bridge. So here we have different earthquake that are implemented in MyDasible. So when you click on earthquake here in this dialog box, you, you, you will find the different earthquake we have in MyDasible. And for the earthquake that we usually use in uh, in dynamic analysis is L central. Those data are in the software. You can take them easily and, and use the data the way you want. 
So after selecting the earthquake, you can also generate the earthquake response spectrum here. If you click this button, you will get this figure here. And you can select the spectrum type you are going to use for the, the design, the analysis and design of the model. So you can have also the pseudo acceleration, pseudo velocity, the combined displacement velocity acceleration. You can have all of them here in your in the the Maida civil and you can apply those those earthquake to your structure easily. This is about the construction stages in Maida civil also we do care about the construction stage so as you are constructing your structure at every stage you have the applied load and they are different so you need to take care of those those uh, variation of loading at each stage until the the completion of your work so my does also support those stages correctly until you finish your construction so this is an example of showing the picture of the construction staging by that silver so also for those who knows how to to model the uh to to write the program yeah, you have this command command shell here so if you are able to to make the logarithm of finite element analysis then you can you can use this this feature to analyze and to model the, the structure the next point is about the analysis and result so we are going to see the analysis done in my dust civil and how you can visualize the result in my dust civil so for the analysis we have a lot of analysis supported by my dust civil we have construction stage analysis moving load analysis model analysis dynamic buckling blood displacement p delta nonlinear thermal analysis all of these analysis are supported in my dust civil so I'm going to go a little bit faster so we can start the demonstration of our of our calvert bridge after this section. So the result can present in terms of deflection, deformed shape, reaction in node, distributed force, and the force and stress element, as you can see on the, the screen. For the agent value analysis, you have those different shape in different modes. And for the inelastic term history analysis, you can have these results here. And these are the, the graph you can find for the camber, camber analysis. When you are you're analyzing the camber, this result may be found after the analysis is performed. And the graph, when you have the stresses, the stress diagram here you can make the graph here depending on the the point the section you choose to analyze this, the the bridge so the tables also can be found in my civil as to showing to show the result is in this case we have the pre-stress tendon losses and the table are presented here for the result also. The other powerful, the powerful feature in uh, moving load analysis, we have the moving load tracer. So you can have the, the position of the vehicle at each point when you when it, it's applied on the bridge. So this picture also is really powerful in my dust saver. And the other, the other powerful feature here, when you select after performing the analysis, when you select the section here, you can have the moment. The moment can be, the moment diagram can be drawn for this section based on the element you have selected. So even if you select the plate element and this beam element here, you will find the moment of those selected elements easily in my that seven. 
The other one is about the design in Python Civil. We have different design code supported in, in the software. As you can see, we have Euro code, Ashto code, and the Canadian code, Korean code, uh, Japanese code, Chinese, and, and so on. So every code you need are present here in the software. The other feature here is the auto generation of load combination. So in order to do the load combination, uh, people sometimes they can struggle. But we in my civil, if you select any code here, it can give you the the load combination automatically. So the other one is about the reinforced concrete design. When you have the reinforced concrete design. After performing it, you can have graphic report and detail report. So in the graphic report, you can have the top and the bottom reinforcement uh, ratio, and then the stirrup spacing can be given in this report easily. And the bending moment capacity also is explained is the value are given here in this report. So for the detail report, you have all the data you need for your design, the section are, are checked and you can you can check if in the section passed when you are doing the analysis in this report for detail report. So also when we are analyzing the column, the general section design here for the column, we have it in my civil. So if we can have the moment curvature plot and then the stress plot and balancing force. And this PM diagram you can, it can help you to analyze the column very well in my dust civil. And dynamic report also is supported in my dust civil. So when you want to make the report dynamically, you can use this feature to make a good report and transfer it in Microsoft Word easily. So the last point we have here, it's a project application. And this is the key for our webinar. We are going to learn how to design a 3D culvert bridge in Midas Civil. So many companies in, in, in the Central Africa, they wanted to know how we can do it easily in Midas Civil. That's why I provide this section for specifically for 3D culvert bridge. So the type of bridge, uh, culvert bridge we, we can design in Wider Civil, we have frame box culvert, pipe culvert, arch culvert, and bridge culvert. And as you know that the culvert bridge, the advantages there is that the culvert are cost effective structure and easy to construct and their maintenance is really cheap so it's a, it's a good it's a good structure that can save your money in maintenance so before you start any design in my civil it's recommended that you specify the unit in the software so you can check the unit you are going to use when you are inputting the data make sure that you have selected the right unit so because we are going to use the the widget it's really easy and simple to save your time using the widget in my civil so we are going to use the widget related to calvert bridge so when we open the widget for calvert bridge uh, you can see that in the dialog box we have three tabs so the first tab here, we have for longitudinal section, and the second one is for the transverse, and the last one is for the, the loading condition on the, the culvert. So we have three different type of culverts here in my civil. We have normal type frame, as you can see on this picture. We have pie type frame in this picture. And then the box culvert, this is the one that we are going to discuss today. So you can make this type of 
of culvert in 2D and 3D. So we, we can show we can go for the transverse session here. For the transverse, also you can input the geometrical data in the transverse transverse of dimension. So in this transverse tab, you can have also the boundary condition defined in my that civil automatically. So we can have the fixed support from the left side of the, the culvert. And we have also the spring support that is automatically generated. And then we have to specify the length of the elastic link. And this length doesn't affect the analysis calculation. So don't worry about the length you will give here for the elastic link. So the third tab here is uh, about the, the loading condition on the culvert. So the self weight is automatically calculated by the software. And when you input the, the weight density of your pavement, the software will use this weight density and this geometrical information to calculate automatically the, the load. And even for the soil, you have put to put the weight density of the soil. And if you have the groundwater, you have to specify it here. And for the barrier, the crush barrier of the, your, your bridge, you have to specify the self weight. And if you have an additional load, you can add it here. And this, for the sidewalk also, you have to specify the weight density and the ground load and the thickness of that sidewalk. Also, you can specify the temperature if you are going to, to apply the, te the temperature load. Also, you can select also the temperature gradient. And this one is for the shrinkage strain. When you need to apply also the, shrink the shrinkage load on the culvert. Uh, this is just the thermal coefficient of, of concrete. If you used concrete, then you can put this thermal coefficient. So this is the type of 3D box culvert we are going to analyze. And it's really simple. These are the information of longitudinal dimension input of the 3D box culvert. So T1 represents the top slab thickness. T2 is the middle wall thickness. And T3, the culvert. Uh, right or left end wall thickness. T4 is the bottom slab thickness. So this information, we are going to use them in the widget I just showed you. And these are the transversal dimension for the crash barrier length. And then we have B3 and B7. And the pedestrian way we have this for the pedestrian. And this is the, the transversal mid span for the culvert. And B5 is the carriageway length in Y direction. And their value, they are there. So we are going to repeat this one when we are going to open the software. Uh, definition of the boundary also. Here yeah, is I explained using the, the software. So this is the, the load that we are going to use to, ap to apply on the culvert. So for the question you, you have to ask, you have to write your question in this uh, question field. So I will ask the question at the end of the, of the, the session. So I'm going to, to open the, the software, my dad civil, so we can start the analysis of, of 3D directly in my dad civil software. So please wait for a second so I can open the software. So this is the this is my dad's civil. And 
when it's open you can start the new project by clicking on this icon or you can go to this icon of my civil and select new project to start the project so i'm going to open the new project and this is the screen of my civil as you can see here and you have to go to structure and then click on RC frame box. But to start, before you start, you have to specify the, the unit you are going to use for the model. So in tool menu, you can go to unit system and then you can select the, the unit system you have to use for the modeling. So this is the units I choose, meter, kilonewton, and for temperature I use degrees Celsius and for heat I I choose kilocalorie and then I click OK. So I have to go to structure and these are the different widgets we have in my data civil. So for today's lesson, we are going to, to choose this widget for Bax Calvert widget. As I just explained before, we have 2D and 3D. First, you need to specify the type of calvets you are going to to design. So for our case, it's a 3D box culvert. So for the material, I have to select the material by clicking here and select material and add. So from this dialog box, I can select concrete and then I can select the type of concrete I'm going to use. And you can see that the property of, conc of concrete that are selected is, is placed here in this box. And after selecting the material, you can click on OK to define the material, and then click on Close. So in this dialog box, because I have, I have defined uh, the length the, trans, the longitudinal transverse and load, so I can bring, I can call the file, I already have this data, because these are the default. So you need to put the right data to make a, a, a good a good model here. So I can open the file I defined before. So I can open this file and have the span, the span, you, can, you need to define the span, uh, the size of the plate elements you're going to use. T1 is the, the top slab thickness and T, T4 is the bottom slab thickness. And as I explained before, I will not explain deeply again about these dimensions. So for the transverse also, you have to choose among this type of, of transverse section here, if you have the, the pedestrian the pedestrian walk, walk, walkway here, you can select the way you, you want to present the pedestrian way for on one side or, or on both sides, you can specify that one. And then you can specify also the carriageway of the, the structure, which is B5, the carriageway. And then for in our case, we don't have the this this part. I just consider zero, as I I didn't uh, specify anything for this case here. And make sure that you put the model list of sub creation depending on the soil property you have on your site. And this is the length of elastic length. And then the fixed support will be automatically defined. Then you can go to the load. So in this case, I specify the, the self-weight pavement and I put the, the density weight of the normal concrete. And then the soil also, I specify this value for soil. And the cohesion friction angle, I specify 30, 30 degrees. And for the underground, I didn't consider it. And then for the crush barrier, I put the self-weight for the crush weight barrier. And 
the additional load also are considered 25 kilonewton per meter. Uh, for the temperature gradient, I consider this 10, 10 degrees Celsius. For the shrinkage load, I input this one is 0 0.000199 and the thermal coefficient. So after you input this data, you click OK. And then the software will, will give you the, the model that you, you specify easily in in the in your this is how the structure look like so if you want if you if you want to see the front the front view is this one so if you want to check the the load or the the boundary condition that are supported automatically by the software you can click on this display icon and this display icon can be found here in the software in view and then display you can click on node if you want to see the node on the structure you can select node here and if you want to check the boundary condition the fixed support and the elastic link we just defined then you click apply then you can check the the boundary condition of our structure is automatically generated so uh, for the load if you want to check also the load you can click on display and then go to load and if i want to check the the dead load on our structure i can select the dead load here or temperature or earth Earth pressure or the shrinkage load we defined previously, you can select any one of these loads to check their value and their position on the, the structure. The dead load, it's a, it's a pressure load, so you can click apply. So this is how the dead load is applied on the, the structure. And our structure has the wing as we specified in the, the geometry. So if you want to check the other load for the temperature, the temperature, it's, uh, you can check the temperature. And if you want to see the value, we input it. You can check the value here and then click apply. So you can see the value we entered is 10 degrees Celsius. And if you can check also for the pressure applied on the, the structure, the earth pressure on the culvert you can check it and then click apply but because there are a lot of number you cannot see it very well but you can see the line of the pressure is here like if i i can check like this you can see the applied load here on the on this side you can see that the pressure is applied here on this wall and then on this wing there pressure applied so let's let's get rid of those loads and then we can do the the analysis before we have we we just define the geometrical model and then we have the applied load and the boundary condition so we can run the model and and do the the analysis easily so you can see that using the weighted in my dust civil it's really simple and easy and it's not a time consuming so you can do it easily you can design your your culvert easily using my dust civil so for to run the analysis, you have to click on on run. But you need first to save the you you need to save first the the file before you run the analysis. So uh, because my computer is in Korea, don't worry about that. I just make the the file and then 3D 
radical bit. And then I, I save the file so it can be analyzed. And you can see that the analysis is really fast. And my dust, your my dust job is successfully completed. When you have this sentence, it means that there's no error in your model, and then you can you can check the analysis re results of your your model. So from here in the result menu, you can go to reaction, and then force reaction to check the the reaction caused by the different load here. And you can see that the load combination is automatically generated by the software. So we can check the reaction due to the dead load. You can check on the value if you want to check the value of the, the reaction and then the legend, then click on apply. So the software will, will give the, the maximum the maximum value for the reaction, but you have to select FZ because FZ is the the reaction force. You have first to select FZ and then value and then legend and then apply. So you can have the the maximum value of the reaction is written here, and it's in kilonewton meter. So this one is a, it's a 199 kilonewton. And then the minimum value is here. It's uh, it's 4.6 kilonewton. So for the software, if you want to check visually where is the the maximum, you have to to turn a little bit the the structure, and you can see where it's placed the red arrow. And that arrow indicates the maximum value of the reaction. So for the for the reaction, when you have that red arrow, it means the maximum value is is on that node. So we can check also the the forces because we use plate element in this model. So we can click on plate force element here, and then if you want to check for the moment in uh, y y direction is select m y and we check the moment due to the dead load because we don't have a lot of time so i'm going to go a little bit faster and and we are going to finish this section in a few minutes so uh, when you select the moment you're going to check you can click on the contour and then you can click on deformation and if you want to check for real information you can check it and then click ok uh, let me check off the value so you can see clearly the the shape of our this is the 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 moment the moment gradient of the the structure the culvert so if you want to check the for the M, MXX, then click apply. You can have the, the moment in XX direction. So usually we use the MYY. That's why I selected MYY. So for the cutting, if you want to check the diagram for the moment in every in the section you want here, first you need to select that the section you want to, to use. Okay, let me click on this and then the initial. And I have to select only. Okay, let me click on the top view. Top view and then I have to select one, one portion. And after selecting this portion, then I, I will anal I will I want to show you the diagram in that section. So I have to go to result, wait for some moment, and then I have to check the moment. I have to to check the value, and then I have to activate only this section, 
and you can see that the section we have is this one so you can click and apply to see the gradient of the the moment here so when you click on cutting diagram you can select the section you can if you click on this corner you go to the other corner then you have to click add after selecting one side of the section and then you go to the other the other side and then you click add you can see that the cutting line is added and then you have to go through through all the section until you have all the section selected then you have you have to click on apply and then the software we and because uh, this is not the real direction of the moment you need to click on reverse here and then apply then this is how the moment is acting on the structure and this is the moment you can check in every section you want to to see the the moment diagram so for uh, the time is over so i don't know if you ask some question here uh, if you have some question because the time is over because I, I told you that we are going to have only one one hour section I would like to show you how to design also the using the plate element in this in this software. So if you can give me five minutes, I will be happy so I can show you how to design because this is only the analysis. So we need to design also the element. So if you give me five minutes, I can show you the step to analyze using the plate element in my server. So please, can you write yes in the in this in in the chatting box so I can continue in five minutes and then we finish this session. Okay, if uh, there is no question, so I can see someone is raising, is raising and the hand here. Can you, can you write the question you have please in the chatting room? the chatting for the question you can write it down so i can read it okay so i hope that you can give me that five minutes so i can show you show you how to design the the plate the plate element for the reinforcement ratio that we can you can look you can analyze in the design so for the design you need first to define the the domain you are going to use for the analysis so here you have to go to the design menu because this is the software in in that is a Korean version of my civil but in the the international version this menu here is the design menu so you can go to design menu and define first the the domain the domain of the design you're going to make so in this case I can select the 
the top slab. I can select the, the top slab of of the culvert using the selecting tool here. I can select only the the top slab and then activate only the top slab like that. And then I click top view. This is the top slab that is that you can see here. So if I select all these elements, I can define that this is the the top slab. After selecting this one, I can click add, and then I define this as the, the top slab. And then if I want to add, I have to add also the sub, the subdomain of the top slab. So I need to select few elements here. Okay, let me go to the top of you. And then I can select this, the part from the crash barrier and I define this as, as left side, left end of the slab. So I need also to specify the element as we, we choose the, the plate beam element here in member type, and then you can put the name and the domain name is top slab and the subdomain is left end of the top slab. And then you need to select plate beam because we are dealing with beam, plate beam. And you need to select also the local axis for the rebar direction. So after defining this, you can click on add as we have already selected the subdomain here, you can click on add. And then the program will ask you if you want to, to delete the result. And then you can say yes, because this is Korean. I just explained in English, what is it? Because I have the Korean version of my data civil. So you need, again, to, to run the analysis before doing the, 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 the design. So after defining the domain and subdomain, then you run again. The analysis after running the analysis then you can go to design menu and then you click the design you are going to use for example I can select a store design for reinforced concrete and then before design we have two type of design here two methods to use you need to select the plate because it's a plate element plate beam data for design. So when you click on, on this, you can find the plate beam data for design. So you need to, to specify the stir up data you are going to use. You can use anything you want because you, you, can, you can repeat this step every time until the, the, the data, until your, your design is accepted. So for the concrete cover, the top concrete cover, uh, I mean, it's a 0 0.045 and the, the concrete cover for the bottom, I can put this 0 0.045. After inputting this information and the direction of the, the main river, then you click add. After defining this information, then you go again to to design and then a reinforce concrete design and then you click on concrete code design and then plate beam design. So when the software analyzes that, it gives you the plate beam design result dialog. So the section, you have to select the section you are going to design. And then for the graphic design, as I explained in my desk, we have two kinds of design report. You click on graphic and then this file will give you the top required rebar area you have to use in the the the, the section of the the element the beam and then the bottom required rebar also are given here and if you have if there is some space that 
are defined, then the software will indicate it. But here in this case, no stir up, so you don't need for for you know you don't need any stir up in this design because it's a, in an arbitrary design, so we don't need to focus on that because the objective is just to show you how to use the design function and capacity in my civil. So this is the first design, the uh, design report. And then for the detailed design, you have to click on design. Uh, okay, let me show you the, the design because you can't see it. So this is the detailed design that uh, I show you on the screen. I hope that you can see it. Then in this detailed design, you can you can have all the information of the reinforced concrete design of the beam. We have the shear capacity, the shear parameter are also represented in this report. The calculation, the menu calculation that you can do, all, all of them are represented here in the detailed report. So this is how you can analyze and design using my dust civil. So for those who have participated until now, uh, because I, I have the list of those who participated and in the in in this coming month they have the they will have the discount the promotional discount of about 30 percent of my that civil so if so uh, for those who has raised the, the hand okay you can you can you can speak Hello. Hello. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you very much for the um, webinar. I just wanted to ask, why is why is the meters general design shape for the box? for the wing wall such that it is longer at the top and shorter at the bottom. Usually our wing walls are, are longer at the bottom and shorter at the top because of the splay in the earth to retain the earth. Okay, okay. okay, okay. You can specify the geometry of the, the, the wings the way you want, but in this example I just choose that, that style of a wing. You can choose you can you can after specifying the, the the geometry you can make the wing go down as you have explained it's not a problem it depends on the geometry you specify when you input the data hello yes thank you okay if another question i can because your mic are all are open you can speak freely I open your all your mic here. Another question, please. Okay, for the other question, you can you can write an email to me 
as you all know my email address so you can send the email then i will respond to the email later when you 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 have any question so thank you for attending this webinar and in the coming months i will we will talk about the the moving load on the calvert bridge and the 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 pre-stress bridge also, we are going to discuss about it. So make sure that you attend also the coming session of the webinar we are going to schedule in the coming months. Because we didn't have enough time to discuss fully about the Calvert Bridge. But in the coming, in the coming months, I'm going to schedule another webinar uh, that we are going to use the moving load. So because we need to take time and to have time of different lessons because one lesson can is not sufficient so we need to make a lot of lessons so you can understand very well how to use the calvert bridge design in by seven i hope that this lesson was helpful to everyone and see you in the coming webinar thank you very much